This is Dr. Chris's radio horror program at 91.3 FM WCW in Worcester, Massachusetts. And tonight we have in the studio live but recorded, so no phone calls, from the Gothic Formal at the Castle at BU, which stands for Boston University, on Friday, October 23rd, 9 p.m. to 1.30 a.m., a Gothic ball of sorts. This is the first time this has happened in the city of Boston, and we have two of the people behind this amazing function, which is the weekend before Halloween. Uh, we have Max and Christine in the studio with us. Hi. Hi, Chris. And they are going to talk to us about why they wanted to put this together and Halloween and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. Thanks for coming in the studio with us, guys. Oh, thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Where did the idea for this come from? A couple Halloweens ago and the uh, Halloweens following that, I always spend myself spend time watching, uh, you know, classic horror flicks, um, you know, old Vincent Price movies and stuff like that. And when you go back and, and see these movies like The House on Haunted Hill, Mask of the Red Death, uh, a lot of the classic you know, gothic tales, as you can as you can say, uh, take place in these manors or these castles, um, mansions. It's always a um, you know core theme of of these stories has always been you know a castle. So I've had this sort of fantasy, I guess, since I was little of sort of um, you know being Dracula or you know something like that. You know, sort of um, living that fantasy of of living in a castle and, and being a part of those stories. I was sort of thinking the past few Halloweens, I was thinking like, man, wouldn't it be great to sort of fulfill that in some way? And I started thinking a little bit, you know, what if, what if it was just for one night you could live that fantasy of, of being in a castle and, and sort of that gothic theme of being part of one of those classic stories? I guess as time went on, I, I sort of... Um, just started uh, planning it and, and, and putting it into action. And, uh, you know, now we have the Gothic Formal, which is essentially that. It's a, a Gothic soiree in a uh, castle that is, um, you know, a classic castle in all sense of the word. It's That's basically that. Well, it's definitely going to be a big event here in, in the city of Boston. It's something that's never been brought this far into the city, normally you find events like this in Salem. You can compare it to the Hawthorne Ball or even the Witch's Ball that happens in Salem, usually before Halloween. It's, around, it's about the same theme, thinking about the same sort of dress up and bring you into an experience more over just another dance night is what Max is really getting at. Yeah, I think that's, that describes it pretty well. You know, I want it to be uh, an experience that, um, just like I said, where uh, for at least one night you can sort of sort of be a part of that or, or sort of be a part of the classic gothic stories, you know, sort of experience it firsthand. Uh, and that's sort of what we were going for when I um, sort of designed the event. Tell us a little bit about the castle. I've never, I've never heard of this before, seen it, or maybe I've seen it driving past it, just never been inside. A fun fact about the castle is that they just filmed some scenes for the new Ghostbusters movie in the space that we're going to have this event. I don't know if that's really a good thing, considering <laughs> that. I am not a fan of this new Ghostbusters, because I do not think you should remake Ghostbusters. I just hope it's funny. I just hope it's just something worth seeing but i have to credit max with finding the location and i think he did a wonderful job it's very much a castle it is a true castle and the decor inside is very much to the period max i i'd say that's pretty much on point it's a tudor tudor revivalist castle i mean when you look at it if you see the photos online or when you see it in person it's it's you know a castle in in every sense of the word. It's exactly it's it, it's a castle, and the it's on in Boston University's campus. It is. Yes, it is. It is. Yes. Yeah, it's right right off of Commonwealth Ave. Where so. did this come from? I mean, did they did it? Was it like flown over here? Or? It was. I believe it was previously a private residence. It has its own Wikipedia page too. It does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very very beautiful location. And the university owns this. Yes. yes. That's crazy. And this thing is amazing looking. It definitely fits the bill for what Max is looking to bring oh, to Boston. Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely. But I, I just can't imagine that, like, um, like, filming here, even for, like, Ghostbusters, was cheap. Yeah, it's 
it's a pretty, I don't know, what, what can you say? It's a, <laughs> yeah. It is the event space. It's, it's definitely, this isn't an event that takes place in a nightclub. No. This isn't an event that you're going to walk into your regular old run-of-the-mill nightclub and hear the same music that you've heard at all the other goth nights. This is very, very different. It's a whole nother experience. I have people texting me right now asking me, are you doing the gothic formal interview? What's the place like? How is the, what's going to happen or whatever? <laughs> um, and, I, and, I, and I said, oh, there's this castle. You're going to, I mean, you're, if you're going, you need, have you even seen what this thing looks like? And some people are like, yes, I have. And a couple people have said, no, I haven't. And I was like, oh, maybe not go online and look at pictures. And you should, uh, if you're listening to this right now, or you're listening to it on YouTube after we put it on the uh, YouTube channel, don't. Don't go look at pictures of what this thing looks like. Wait till you get there. Just be like, I am blind until I enter. And then, oh my God, it's so just, ah. And one of the things that we're offering that is included in the ticket price is formal photography. Oh. So look your best. This is the place to get your picture taken when you're dressed up in a very formal Victorian outfit or a very gothic outfit. I, mean, I gotta do some major shopping. <laughs> I gotta do some shopping. I, I, I don't have very much in the way of that at all. <laughs> so, what's the music gonna be from? What's the music gonna be from? Uh, the music selection is gonna be a little bit different than what people might be used to in the uh, usual Boston goth scene, I guess you could say. Uh, it'll be a bit eclectic. The music style will have more of an emphasis on sort of the. Sort of dark wavy, as as we say. Um, it's got a bit of an emphasis on sort of Victorian Gothic themes. Mm. So if people are familiar with the band uh, Blue Angel, uh, it's a German band that are very um, they're very elaborate, I guess you could say. They are very um, you know Blut, they they, they pers- call Blue Angel. Yeah, B uh, Blut B L U T and E N G E L. Like a blue blood. Yes. Okay. So, so if you look at pictures of what they look like, you'll see that. They're very formal. They're sort of personify the kind of theme that we're going for. And their music is influenced by classic Gothic literature, you know, vampires and those sort of themes, um, you know, romance and things like that. So the music will sort of um, will encompass that, sort of reflect those themes, you know, classic Gothic literature. All the way from Germany. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh their newest album is the Omen or yes. Omen, no the but Omen, which yeah. is funny because there's an Omen TV series that's launched or launching. Yeah, Chris Paul, the lead singer of that group, uh, is pretty. He's pretty serious about about uh, gothic music. If you look into his background, um, maybe some of your fans will be familiar with him. Um, he's he's a very Dark uh, romantic themes of love, vampirism, sex, death, and immortality. There you yep, go. there, awesome. yeah, that that does it. So that's that's <laughs> basically it. It's gonna be a lot less stompy, a lot more swirly, for those that are looking to decide what it is that they're going to be dancing to. I think that describes it pretty well. Definitely swirly goth. <laughs> They've been around since the 1998. Yes. They've been around for a long time, and they're still active today, which is nice. A lot of yeah. bands don't see that long, uh, especially independent bands. are. Uh, I mean, are they bigger than Europe in G- Germany? or? Yes, they are huge in really? Germany. Like um, Days with Hasselhoff huge in Germany? Y- y- yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, they've only, to my knowledge, they've only toured in the U.S. once, and I had the privilege of seeing them. You know, they really are, I mean, I love their music. I think it's very different than what people are used to hearing in, in sort of the, you know, traditional um, goth scene, I guess you could say, which tends to be more, you know, electro-industrial, uh, EBM, which is great. I, you know, I love that music as well, but uh, it's good to hear stuff that's um, just a little bit different, what you might not be used to hearing, but, um, you know, still within sort of the uh, range of, you know, genres that, you know, goths like. I will have to uh, play some of their music on the air the, tonight while we record it, and then of course uh, when we when we actually when we actually air this, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll play it. Doctor Matched spins. D- what what's this part? Uh, Doctor Macht. Macht. Okay. He's a uh, good friend of mine. He DJs at Ceremony uh, in Boston, which Monday. is Monday. Yes, those are uh, um, uh, weekly uh, weekly on Mondays. Oh my God! I wish I lived closer to Boston to be able to go to that a lot. I've only been able to go to like one every like six or eight months. He he is occasionally the guest DJ at Ceremony, um, so people might be familiar of him from Ceremony. 
Um, but uh, he would be the DJ of the night, and he um, he's going to he'll be playing music that is uh, on theme with you know what we're um, you know what we're going for. Cool. Now, as you said, you don't want this to you don't want people like to kind of think of this like a dance club. You said this is going to be more like the witch's ball in Salem. That's correct. It's going to be a lot more dressy. It's uh-huh. going to there is going to be uh, hors d'oeuvres that are served. Oh, which you do not get at Ex Mortis or Heroes or any of the Man Ray parties. Hence the price tag. Exactly. Ah, okay. So anyone curious about the price tag, your price tag actually not, not just to get in the door and dance for free, which oh, no. seems a little crazy. No, it's to it's there's an experience it's to it. The whole experience it, in it's, total. It's Cinderella's Gothic ball. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if Cinderella came down wearing a black dress instead of that stupid blue dress with right. black hair, maybe, or brown hair, not blonde, and be like, oh, where's my prince? Oh, let me find him. No, it's like they're like banging out to like heavy metal or something, you know, and the prince is like. It's as much fun as those other parties are, and they are a ton of fun if you ever get a chance to go. There was one last night. Yes, there was. I was at Dark last night. I wish I'd yes. gone. I just work, and then it, and as soon as I get back, I'm like, oh, well, here I'm going to drive out to Salem from Framingham. <laughs> Heroes has gone to uh, twice a Saturday now. Mm-hmm. It's every other Saturday I host Heroes. Oh, so okay. I'm finally free to make my way out and enjoy other events. I think the next time it's happening is going to be a week, is the Rock and Shock weekend next well, we ha- week. We have one on October 3rd at Machine and one on October 17th at the Middle East downstairs. Yeah, the 17th Rock and Shock weekend. It's the horror uh, convention here in town. Think- the weekend before this, actually. <laughs> so that's why I was glad that this was happening not that weekend because that would have sucked. <laughs> Yeah, we had to really coordinate the date. Um, I was sort of thinking, uh, what's not happening this yeah. In October? <laughs> yeah, well, I think, yeah. If you put it on, if if you if we hold it on, you know, if we have it on Halloween, there's just so much competition. There's just so much going on, and the city is just it's just crazy. There's just there's just too much going on, and I didn't want. I didn't want the event to be sort of outshadowed by those other things or to be lost in sort of the noise. So I wanted this to be very special. I wanted people to mark this on their calendar and say, that's the day that I, you know, I need to be at the Gothic Formal. It's, you know, I wanted people to, to really look forward to this. And if Max had chosen Halloween as a date, I wouldn't be able to work with him. As I have the Man Ray party on Halloween night. Oh, there's Over at too the much Paradise going on. Rock Club, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be in, I'm gonna be uh, walking through Salem on Halloween. I've never done it before, so I, I I called up a friend of mine and said, "What are you doing Halloween? Nothing." I'm like, "All right." So what's I mean, you live in Beverly, and it'd be really convenient to stay at your house. Um, so I've never done that. So it's the first time I'm gonna do the Salem and Halloween. I was supposed to go to Transylvania this year, and that's not happening. Oh, that, oh it's funny because a friend of mine lives in Romania and has invited me to Transylvania on a number of times. But I heard it's like a massive party. Yeah, like people from all over Europe come out to Dracula's castle for the yep. big party Halloween that, night. That is true. <laughs> yeah, having friends that live there, it, it kills me. <laughs> they just tell me they're like, oh, you know, you missed all. The parties in Transylvania, and it's like, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it kills me. How many floors and where do the events take place of this? Because I mean, from the uh, from the cars, the the uh, the two pictures of just the outside, and then that one uh, that meant one main area. But is this taking place all over the castle? Like a frat house? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how uh, much room do we have access to? So <laughs> we have a number of rooms that we have access to. So sort of the main entryway, which has the grand staircase and then the rooms adjacent to that so which actually gives us quite a bit of room um, there will be room for people to dance there will be room for people to sort of stand around and drink and dine and relax there'll be another room where they can sit down and sort of leisurely you know have discussions with other patrons um, and there'll be plenty of plenty of room for for people to just um, be at their leisure. I, th- I say we have we have access to a good amount of space. And all uh, the rooms will be decorated in the theme. And Max has a wonderful decorator coming in that he has uh, worked with on websites in the past. I think you were telling me about that in email. Who's the decorator? Yeah, so um, I'm working with a decorator named Arthur Targoncetis. Being on radio, being as descriptive as possible. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> he, he previously was a decorator under his... A uh, company called Style Studio. And what was the name? Of his, name his name again? Arthur Targoncetis. Okay. Yeah. So he previously designed. He previously had a uh, event design house called um, Style Studio. Um, so he was 
he would previously, his previous work would be decorating events to particular themes. So his specialty is sort of um, taking a space and just converting it into whatever theme that you want. So whatever he was um, sort of envisioned. So he would take a, you know, say it would be, uh, in this case, like a, you know, this gothic theme. He's going to take the castle, which is already an incredible space, um, and he's just going to sort of um, emphasize the gothic elements and the gothic accents of the castle and sort of um, just just encompass people in that environment. And that's really what he does. He's going to take the space and um, decorate it to really bring out those gothic themes that are that's already there but sort of accenting and sort of uh, emphasizing our themes so um, but his piece he's uh, we can put up some like pictures of his work from like his website and cool. things like that um, but he's decorated um, a number of different events he's done he's done um, you know home staging for magazines and things like uh, things of that nature Will all the servants be in some type of theme as well, walking around like you know? I'm assuming there'd be like butlers and maids and there, yes, there will be wait staff. Um, I don't know how to theme. Um, we can get them, but I'm going to try and get them as close to the theme as possible. Are they all staff for the castle, or are they volunteers for your event? Oh, they're all staff for the castle. Yeah. So that's one thing I should mention is that catering on the Charles will be um, will be providing all of the staffing. Um, they will be serving drinks. It's a full stock bar. Um, they, will be, they will be serving um, gourmet hors d'oeuvres, gourmet desserts. So um, it's, it'll be a well-served event. Is there anything else you guys want to add about the, uh, the, the castle event before we get into any sillier questions? Well, we just hope that this event is, is well received in Boston. Like I said, it's one of the first of its kind that's come up this far, uh, especially where you mostly have events like this in Salem, and the ticket prices are often higher than mm -hmm. what we're offering. We're hoping to, with the lower ticket price than what Salem is offering that we can bring people in to this experience, and hopefully they like it, and maybe we can do it again. But that's up to the crowd. It's up to the response. So we hope that people really, really love the event. They take it seriously. They really want to dress up, enjoy the photos, enjoy the food, enjoy the dancing, and just enjoy the entire experience and have fun with it. We had a couple of um, steampunk uh, like uh, formals here in Worcester, and they 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 did it uh, in March, and then one in October. Or, no, sorry, it was like the weekend after Halloween. Um, so it was like a post Halloween. They'd rather they they try to have a more of a crowd, and that's it. They they just they weren't finding another like a space to do it at the uh, the cigar the old cigar shop that they did it at, which was like this old bank that has been turned into a bar. Uh, with like the old bank vault and everything and the, the, the cages and stuff like that. Uh, they didn't want them to do it there again and renting the Palladium was really too expensive so they didn't they haven't found another home for it and they want us to keep it in Worcester County They're like oh yeah we could go to Boston or something but that just becomes more expensive and you know the couple that runs it are both from Worcester so it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to go all the way out to Boston to try and host something. Are you, I'm assuming you guys are from Boston um, to do this. Yes. So Yes. But to be honest with you, having gone, gone through the closing of Man Ray, having gone through the closing of T.T. the Bears, moving Ex Mortis, moving Heroes, uh, now twice uh, over Yikes. to the Middle East downstairs, venues are very, very tough to come by. Mm. It, it, either they're too small or they're too big or they don't have a night for you or the dates aren't working out. Venues can be a really, really tough thing to deal with. You, know what, you know what you need to do? They're just open a casino. Go win the lottery <laughs> casino, build your own event, and be like, I'm going to do whatever I want because I'm the king of my world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to do that. I mean, that, was, that was originally what I had in mind, but I was like, and then I looked at the price of castles, and I was like, yeah, can't really afford that. You just fly it over brick by brick. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then put it on the top of a, uh, just put it on top of the, a big tower that over, you know, that's that, so the castle rises above the clouds. And then maybe something magical happened, like gargoyles come to life. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just Disney quoting from a Disney cartoon, Boston, you know. Yeah. <laughs> God, how awesome would that be of all, like, the Disney stuff speaking? Of, like, we just talked, got done talking, oh, sorry, we just got done shitting on Cinderella. Um, how <laughs> awesome would it be to Disney take of anything? They take gargoyles, make it to a live action freaking movie. 
You know what I mean? And they do it right with like the people who've worked on like the Marvel stuff or something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I'm talking about? How mm-hmm. awesome would that be? It'd be like the first like truly like gothic Disney movie they've ever done. Yeah, I don't know. It, that was the first like gothic c- cartoon they ever did <laughs> outside of uh, right. um, uh, Night on Bald Mountain from Fantasia. That was it. If they did it right, it'd be amazing. But they have to do it right. That's the thing. I was always, to me, I was always a huge Vincent Price fan. Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean. Have you met Victoria? No. They, she was in town last year for Rock and Shock, the horror convention that I, I keep mentioning. Yeah, no, that was that was basically my inspiration for this event was Vincent Price and the films that he's been in. You I should, mean, like, send an invitation on Victoria. I'm sure she would love to come. That's that's an idea. She can be reached at the Vincent Price. She's the runner of the VincentPrice.com website, like the Vincent Price estate and everything. That's that's not a bad idea. We might we might we might have to do that. She might already be busy that week. You know what I mean? Because October is probably like a slam right. month for her. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. toting around her father's stuff and you know telling tales of dad and things like that. Which I mean, it was a big deal to get her last year for Rock Shock. But she's, I mean, could just imagine how busy she is this time of year. Yeah. She should be an interesting character to have if she could show up. That'd oh yeah, a lot of yeah. fun. Yeah, no, she's a, she was she was a great person. Her she brings her. Um, she brings her nephew with her, which is her brother's kid, and uh, he's like, not a kid, he's thirty or something years old. But he, um, you know, he also, you know, has a lot of memories of of his uncle or something, uh, Vincent Price. Yeah. So he's obviously much older than thirty if he has any memories of Vincent Price, of course. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But th- those two are the ones who run the uh, the Vincent Price estate. She obviously carries the name and everything, being Victoria Price. So. Yeah, that's an idea. I mean, we have a number of theoretical guests that we'd like to have so we will add that to the list oh, do you have any surprise guests that we haven't announced or anybody you're not allowed to announce oh I uh, wish yeah <laughs> so, okay. uh, we, I mean I mean we'll see that's all I can say you never know who's gonna show up I mean, but we have you know in those nights we've had a lot of uh, different people walk in that have some sort of fame attached to their name and yeah, I mean, I will say that we've had a lot of interest overseas. Uh, got a lot of interest from the UK, a lot wow. of interest from Germany. I do know there is especially with be, the band. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we I we've been sort of uh, advertising and posting this, and a lot of uh, European groups uh, on Facebook that are familiar with this theme uh, that might be um, a little bit more accustomed to these types of events. So we do have one guest that's going to be flying from Germany, who um, you know. David Hasselhoff? No. (laughs) (laughs) So we always ask, I'd like to ask this uh, whenever anyone comes on the show, it doesn't matter what project they're working on or what they're from, uh, what their favorite um, horror movie is of all time. Oh, favorite horror And if you come on a show like this, you usually are somewhat of a horror fan, of course. (laughs) Because every guest has a horror connection. Even when we have cosplayers on. (laughs) For me, it would be Stephen King's It. That clown. Pennywise? Um, yes. Pennywise? Yeah. Yes. Tim it, Curry? Wow. Just done. They're remaking Cannot that? Cannot get it out of my head. I saw that. I'm all set. I don't know. <laughs> it's been in development hell for years. I mean, yeah. you can research how long they've been trying to remake it and like, wow, how much money have they been paying people to try and remake something that's never come out? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I could sit through a remake because I barely made it through the original without screaming and having to turn the lights on. So. You know they're going to over CGI the shit out of that. Oh, of course. Stupid remake, yeah. I mean, they're working on the stand right now. Yeah. Because everything in the 90s needs to be remade. <laughs> Thanks, Doogie <laughs> Hauser. I mean... <laughs> Wait, did, did they say they were just going to try and do one of Full House, was it? No, it's, it not a, it's not a, not a remake, though. Oh. It's a complete... It is a sequel because they were getting oh. the girls to come back. The only p- person who doesn't want to come back is Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, it's like, okay, we can do it without them. <laughs> 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 Broom them to the door. Yours? It's really tough for me to say. Uh, I really love classic you know, horror. Or, um, as Vincent Price once said in an interview, the films of his era were gothic tales. And, um, well, they're know, all black and white, so... Well, right. So it's, you know, pretty easy. You to, could say a you know. gangster movie was... Yeah. <laughs> if it was dark and moody. Well, you know, I mean... I think he cited This Dark House a lot, which I don't think has ever still gotten a DVD or Blu-ray release, at least in the United States. Mm-hmm. So it's really hard to find. It's an old Boris Karloff movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of the first kind of, like, group gathers at a house and crazy shenanigans happen, whether it be supernatural or just a mystery. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a movie I know he has cited. Because I have a Victoria's uh, biography, My Dad or something. 
Life with my dad. Yeah. It's it's so tough for me to decide which would be my favorite horror movie just because I'm such a huge Vincent Price fan. I'd have to say so many of his movies, um, you know, could... I, I mean, I don't know. I can't even pick one. There's just so many of his films that I just... When I watch them, I, I just... I just love his work. I just love the character that he projected on the screen. Um, so I'm just, I just love his work. So I really can't, I can't really pick a favorite horror movie. Um, but I have to say, like, your classics, like, uh, you know, Dracula and Frankenstein um, are always, uh, you know, on the list. But it's really tough for me to say. I like the classic. Universal Studios just released, um, of course, you know, this time of year, they'll really, re- you know, everything will get re put out. So it's easy to find, and uh, I know Hammer's putting out a bunch of stuff, but they also just put out on a single disc, or two discs, but in the same package, so you don't have to go buying multiple DVDs or box sets, uh, the Abbott Costello Meet the Monster series. Uh, so they're going to have the Frankenstein movie, which also has Dracula and the Wolfman, uh, and, and a cameo of last-minute appearance by Vincent Price as the Invisible Man, which is very <laughs> funny. Uh, he's, like, smoking a cigarette. Uh, they meet the Invisible Man, so there's that movie, The Mummy, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You know, my father is retired now, and one of his favorite things to do is surf the Internet because this is all new for him. Mm-hmm. And he has found and started downloading a lot of the Creature Double Feature. Uh-huh. And they have a lot of Vincent Price stuff on it. Cool. Yeah, and Don Knotts and all of those old black-and-white horror movies that used to scare the hell out of me as a child. And uh, I would watch with him. So now he's downloading them and putting them on thumb drives and giving them to me. And I'm like, thanks, Dad. So I have this huge collection of thumb drives that I, I don't know if I'll ever get through. There was a quote by Jim Carrey years ago. I think it was definitely in the 90s because I remember Dan doing this in the 90s uh, that he said that, uh, uh, well, then Ghost Mr. Chicken comes on at like midnight. And I think I can't go to bed. I have to watch that. And I was like, what is the Ghost of Mr. Chicken? And, and he goes in some very, he goes in a very brief description, you know, the, the Don Knotts ghost movie. And this is before the internet, so I had no way of looking up. But then one night, I'm about to go to bed and Ghost of Mr. Chicken are on. And I stayed up to like 2 a.m., fell asleep on the floor watching this thing. I was probably like 16 or 15 years old or whatever. You know, it's this Don Knotts ghost movie where some guy's trying to embezzle, you know, get some money that's hidden in his house. And he, pretends to be like a Scooby-Doo kind of ghost and Don Knotts all like, oh, what G Willard, you know, Don Knotts style. And I was like, that was great. Thank you, Jim Carrey. And I fell in love with that movie. And then a couple of years ago, there was this great um, fake like trailer thing done. Uh, they did one for like the Avengers, made it look like, well, what if the Avengers was made in the 1950s? There was all these great little clips from all these different sci-fi movies that make it look like an Avenger movie, including some actual clips of like the serials of Captain America. And they did one with Ghostbusters, and they showed clips from Ghost of Mr. Chicken and uh, um, Bob Hope's uh, Catch That Ghost, which is another really great uh, classic like horror comedy where again it's the same kind of plot line they go to a mansion where there's some guys there pretending to be a ghost to get some money out of people but it opens up with the the, the sign on Bob Hope's door Ghost, Ghostbusters or whatever yeah. and he's got like multiple phones set up everywhere and he's talking to the audience about ever since I got into the Ghostbusting business and this ghost comes along he's like alright let me tell you my story and it goes into Bob Hope's movie <laughs> I'm noticing that a lot of the old movies are big with the younger generation. My nephew is just telling me how much he's into Scooby-Doo, but Scooby-Doo pre-Scrappy-Doo, and he's Ugh. been downloading it on his iPod, I think it is. I hated Scrappy-Doo. Oh, Scrappy-Doo was terrible. We all agreed that it was like the worst addition to Scooby-Doo. That's why they made him the villain. Yeah. <laughs> And my nephew is 12, so I was very, very impressed that he was into cartoons from the 1960s. Did you see what the new Scooby-Doo movie is? Because they put out a new Scooby-Doo movie every single year around in the summer. Did you see what the new one is? Yes. Scooby-Doo meets Kiss. Yes. <laughs> and it's like classic Scooby-Doo episode where they have to team up the van to go mm-hmm. fight the monster. Like the old <laughs> episodes of Scooby-Doo where they always teamed up with like a celebrity guest star. Uh, like Don Knotts. Yep. The Addams Family. Sonny and Cher. Batman and Robin, <laughs> which was voiced by the, uh, which was I don't forget who I don't remember who voiced Batman, but it was Casey Kasem doing double duty as Shaggy and Robin, and they've uh, they kind of had that happen on uh, in, in like comics. But there was a the last Scooby Doo cartoon that that was out was called Scooby Doo Mysteries Inc. and it was a mm-hmm. fifty two episode serial that like every episode was connected, and you find out about why the biggest thing the biggest question is finally answered in the Scooby Doo universe: Why does Scooby Doo talk and no other animal does? They actually answer that. And I never got to the end. <laughs> demonic stuff, occult stuff. 
this totem that they're trying to put together has infected groups of people that have had like a animal companion with them throughout ages. Mm -hmm. Like one, it's like this Mexican group, so they have a bull. Uh, the last Mystery Inc. group that was around in the in the in the sixties and seventies, which when the Scooby Doo cartoon was created, uh, was like it's it's Fred's like real biological parents. This like black rapper DJ chick. Um, this uh, occultist who's kind of like Velma, who's like you know, who was like super skinny back then, but now he's like you know, like just he looks horrible today. And then uh, this this parrot or whatever, this really skinny parrot now got like a scar on its eye or whatever, and it's like this big fatter bird and stuff like that. And the uh, they the, the parrot is like the main antagonist through the whole thing or whatever, telling you know, giving away the clues about you know about this mystery. It's very uh, old gods type of stuff, mm -hmm. very Cthulhu type stuff. Because uh, in the last episode, it's it's everything comes to fruition, and then there's a big reset in the timeline, and the kids are the only ones who remember the original universe. Uh, but they explain that this thing has this this de this uh, Cthulhu like demon has infected all these animals throughout history, and that's why they can talk, whether it be good or bad. It's very interesting for a children's cartoon. Yeah, and there's this otherworldly dimensional being, like the explanation for the kingdom with the crystal skull that they're not aliens, but they come from another dimension, who's embodied this dog that Scooby Doo's in love with that can talk to, that talks as well. And she's like, you know, I took the form of only something that, you know, like the greatest hero would understand, and that is Scooby Doo. So she takes the form of a dog, even though she's again <laughs> this kind of like disembodied extra dimensional demon, and she's trying to tell Scooby Doo that, you know. <laughs> the clues. It's like really insanely intense for a children's cartoon. You know, they're coming out with another Scooby Doo. It, they look like Looney Tune characters. They do. They look horrible. They're horribly drawn. It's, like, it's what on the Cartoon Network. Crack. Yeah. God. I, has it even started yet? No, I believe it's supposed to start in October, but I'm not going to watch it. Just I can't even look at their faces. It's not them. I hope that it's like the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cartoon on Nickelodeon. I scoffed and shat all over that when that came out, but I am a addicted to that cartoon because it's so well written and he yeah, has a little looney tunes at times but it is insanely adult very a, a lot of times like when you're trying to like learn that okay so this character who shredder adopted is actually hamato yoshi's like daughter that supposedly died years ago in japan and wow. shredder's like really dark and he's always in shadow and oh he's talking like this or whatever he's got he's got like a freddy krueger like face under his helmet and everything it's like <laughs> really dark and wow. like the uh baxter stockman gets turned into a fly it's very much like the damon cronenberg like fly or whatever it's not like the very like oh this just happens no he does disgustingly fly stuff like <laughs> vomiting in a children's cartoon you're like holy shit somebody loved Cronenberg when they made this cartoon <laughs> and then I got to email I got to interview Kevin Eastman which was like interviewing God himself or whatever and I had like 20 minutes alone with him in a room because no one else wanted to do the interview so his wife's like I'm gonna go get coffee you got 25 minutes with my husband bye and I was like ah! so he was telling me it's like oh yeah I'm, I'm like a big hand in developing that with Nickelodeon so I wanted to throw a lot of stuff and like adults like you who grew up on the 80s cartoon got but we also make it obviously you know appropriate for kids and stuff like every episode they, they watch a cartoon what originally it was like some type of mishmash of like voltron now it's a mishmash of like he-man and uh like a version of it but you can definitely tell that it's he-man and what happens in the episode is like the uh, metaphor of what, what the turtles are gonna do so yeah well yeah pretty in depth it can be yeah <laughs> Makes me uh, makes me okay watching cartoons and you know people are like why do you watch cartoons I'm like because they're awesome well they are <laughs> and they're a stress reliever too you can really sit down get into them watch the colors go by not really pay attention definitely so where can everyone go to continue finding out information about what's going on on the twenty third which is a Friday not a Saturday if you look up on Facebook the Gothic Formal okay. we have a, an event page that you can find all of the up to date information about the event. An easy way to get there is just by going to gothicformal.com and then clicking on Facebook at the top, which will give you all of the updated information about the event. We're always adding more info to the page and, you know, all kinds of new stuff. So just check it out. The, uh, the name of the band again is in their, their website, so people can look at, listen to their and buy their CDs and stuff? Uh, Blue Dingel. Blue Dingel. Okay. And they won't be there live. We'll just be playing them via DJ. But... Yeah, we'll be playing some of their, Yeah, so don't go, like... Oh man, they're like playing in the U.S. and you know they're not. <laughs> <laughs> then you have all these extra fans coming out and they're like, "What the hell?" And some dude at a table just rapping records. We yeah. we just did Lame. Um, <laughs> a David Bowie CD release party. Uh -huh. Or not David Bowie. I'm sorry, Duran. Duran. Really? Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> we did a Duran Duran CD release party <laughs> at Heroes, and I, I, suddenly this string of messages appeared. 
on the page. Oh my God, Duran Duran is playing the Middle East. No, no, no. We're just doing the senior Don't release come party. Here. Yeah. There's no Duran Duran. I'm sorry. Next thing you know, state police are knocking on the door and the fire marshal. Why are all these people in the streets? <laughs> yeah. You're in trouble. Here's a fine. See you in court. Yeah. And you're just like, F me. <laughs> Yeah, so you have to be very careful of that. So that's sort of why we haven't really advertised any, like, band names or anything like that. There is no band. Yeah, there is no bands. And a lot of people ask, they're like, oh, is there a band playing? No, there's not. And I don't think we, I don't think really... um, But the music will be from the Blue Angel. Yes, there will be. I mean, some of the music will be, um, because they fit with the theme. But, again, Dr. Macht will be playing... Very, um, you know, dark wavy, sort of as as Christine said, sort of swirly goth, like a little bit more refined, uh, less think, stompy. Think Portis Head. Think Dead Can Dance. Okay. That type of music. It's it's easier to dance to. It's not so much an eight eight beat where you're stomping up and down. And I hate that. As Max said I earlier, hated at, <laughs> yeah. I, I hated that at Club Hell a lot of times. <laughs> I mean, it's like, ugh. Yeah. It it you know I. I like it, and there are some songs that I like, but it is not something that I personally dance to. Mm-hmm. I'm just not good at it. There's just a lot of people doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't that, yeah. see that on radio, but you can hear the sound. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Visualize in your head five people all wearing black just dancing around the studio at WCUW 910 Main Street. <laughs> People can dance to it really well. I'm just not one of those people. No, I look terrible. It's no. not a good thing. Yeah, I, I can't dance to that. I, I am definitely more comfortable with something that's uh, like a little bit slower, a little bit uh, more re- refined. I mean, I just look like an idiot whenever I try to like dance to anything that's like, you know, harder or you know industrial or anything like that i just wind up i just wind up look like an idiot and, gotcha. and max said earlier who wants to eat a pumpkin pie to an 8-8 beat you yeah. just can't do it <laughs> yeah thanks again for coming out and talking about the gothic formal which again is on friday october 23rd at 9 p.m at the um, castle at bu which is like looks just absolutely amazing well thank you for having us it's no great problem being here and hopefully you'll, you'll be able to do it again next year Oh, we hope so. Yeah. We definitely hope so, but we'll see. Yes, definitely. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And have a happy Halloween. Yes, happy Halloween.